It's a glorious snowy morning. See anything out there, Gibbs? Nope. We just had our first snowfall of the fall season here in Calgary and everything is just white and beautiful out here. And I love this. I love when we get snow, but it also means that my house is a little colder than it usually is. And I could turn up the heat, but instead I decided to wear this toque, which is really cozy, has the Seahawks colors. Go Seahawks. So that's where my day is at right now. Anyone else have Halloween candy that they're trying to finish off and get through? So it's not in the house as a constant temptation. <laughs> we got about 20, 25 trick-or-treaters, which is a pretty good turnout. Someone here wants my candy as well. No, no candy for you. There's chocolate in this. I love Halloween, but now we are just looking straight on down the barrel to Christmas. And I'm getting excited for that now. Oh, it's so hard to open. But the reason why I decided to sit down with you with some candy and coffee and my pets running around is because I wanted to talk about something really cool that happened to us the other day. Whoppers. So good. We went to a farmer's market the other day. Actually, Kale went to a farmer's market. I usually don't go to these things, but Kale loves them. So he was there and we had our usual inventory, but we had a few new things. And it was there that we witnessed for the first time a product that just flew off of our shelves. It was a brand new product that I wasn't even sure about. I'd never sold something like this before, but according to Kale, according to his account, people were just grabbing for it. As soon as they saw it on our table, they made a beeline for it, picked it up, and they didn't even care how much it cost. We actually priced this product a little bit more than the other products that were like this because of a few features, which I'll get into. But people didn't mind paying the extra couple of dollars for this one thing, and we sold out of it. And for me, as someone who has been vending for a while now, that is pretty awesome. When it comes to stuff that I bring to our markets, I don't like to bring too many things. I bring as much as I can, but I don't really worry about having a ton of inventory because the way it usually goes is we sell quite a bit of it, but we never really sell out of certain things. And if we do, it's because we've only brought a few couple of units and they're all gone. So what is this magical product? It was this guy little skull cauldron thing that I mentioned in my last video. And these are the coolest bath bombs I've ever tried in my bathtub. It just spills up over the top of him. And I talked about in that last video how these types of bath bombs tend to do really well, but I didn't say that from experience because I'd never sold anything like this before. I just kind of knew from other bath bomb businesses that have sold something like this. I've, I see the engagement on their social media posts. I see how popular these things tend to be. So I kind of had an idea that people would want something like this, but I was still pretty blown away by how fast people bought this little guy from our table. Actually, I'd taken product photos of this very product in the last video with every intention of listing it online, but we sold out of mostly or we still have a few left. We forgot to bring a couple of them because I had taken product photos of them so we didn't pack them with us. So we have like two or three of these left, but I'll probably just bring them to the next market and we'll probably fully sell out of these at that market too. Even though it's no longer Halloween, these bath bombs have a ton of appeal. And one of the best parts about this product is how easy it is to make. It's literally stuffing bath bomb mix into this cavity and you're done. And to show you just how easy it is, here is some footage of me making these guys right here. <laughs> so I have my two colors of my mix. This looks very blue, but this is actually going to turn purple. This is grape dye. And this is a red that I made using Fizz Fairy's Real Deal Red. I'm sure you've seen these before. These are adorable little cavity bath bombs that you can stuff with bath bomb mix. And kids love them, they go nuts for them. And Fizz Fairy sent me these skull ones, which I think are so spooky and cool looking. It is so simple to make these. You basically just fill them with bath bomb mix and you're done. No worrying about it crumbling or falling apart. We're gonna make them even more fun by adding these tiny little toys inside of each one of these. My friends who have kids, they say that kids don't even care what the toy is. They just want a toy in their bath bombs, which is really, really fun. So to make these, you basically just alternate between the two colors. We're gonna fill this with a toy. These are adorable little Pokemon 
toys. This is Evie. Looks like that on the inside. And then just keep filling. And then pack it in too, because you don't want the bath bomb mix to be super loose. You really want it to seep out of these guys slowly so that the kids or adults can really enjoy their bath time. And I want to make it so that they can see the two different colors at the top. Make sure you're filling all the way to the top and packing it in. So once you get to the top, just smooth off the top. And there you go. And a cool part is even though there is a tiny toy on the inside, just this guy, this skull cauldron thing is a really fun toy for kids. These are so popular this time of year. So I'm gonna go and make more of them and show you what they all look like in a row. So here are all of my skulls filled up and you can see that that blue is now turning into that nice purple I was talking about. And as I was filling these guys, I realized that having the toy inside makes a lot of sense because now the adult or the child who's using this in the bath knows exactly where to look for it. It's gonna be inside of the skull instead of you know, searching around his bathtub. There's only one place for that toy to come out of and it's right here. <laughs> makes it really easy to find that toy. And I was able to make another four of these cute bears and then a tiny little diamond over here. This mold is really easy to use for a 3D hand press mold. They're usually very tricky, but I found this guy worked best with a lighter press and they popped out really nice. And that's how that's done. Super easy, like I said. Not only are these bath bombs super easy to make, but they are also one of the most fascinating bath bombs to watch in your tub. I loved demoing this thing. Here is some footage of that. Not only did I love watching the water enter it and then spew out over the top of his head here, but it also took forever to fizz. This could probably last a couple of baths. So that's huge value for your customer right there. And the last big benefit of this is that your child or you get this plastic toy at the end of it. I also put a toy on the inside of these things, but it's kind of overkill. You don't really need a toy. I just think it's fun for the product, but just having this is a lot of fun, I think, for most kids. But you might be wondering to yourself, Hey, Jerrica, how is this relevant? It's November. Halloween's over. Why do I need to know this? I can't sell these things now. First of all, I disagree with that. I think if you were to list something like this on your site right now, people would probably buy it. But you're right. It's no longer Halloween. The peak selling time for this type of product is now over. However, the best time to buy certain things that are seasonal are when that season is over. So if you were to look at this very site right now, these skull cauldron things are on sale. And when it comes to business things, you always wanna be thinking ahead to the next season. Yes, even as far back as a full year before that season actually happens. Because of how popular these things were, I definitely will be purchasing a bunch of these at the discounted rate, and I suggest that you guys do as well. Because with the way inflation is going, you never know how much more expensive these will be when Halloween time does come around next year. Might be a full dollar more, full two dollars more. The rate at which the prices of things have just exploded have shocked me. When I invested in my first 25 kilo box of shea butter, I think that was now five years ago, it cost, I think, just shy of $100. And that was from New Directions Aromatics. Now, fast forward five years later, it is super 
hard to find this amount of shea butter for under $200. I think it's pretty much impossible. So that's another reason why you should think about purchasing things now instead of around the time when everyone else is looking to purchase that thing. If you buy a bunch of these at a discounted rate now, and then over the course of the year, maybe you decide to close up your business, guaranteed you will find buyers at a D stash group somewhere because people love these. So the big question is seasonal products, should we do them? Yes, the short answer is yes, I think you should. But where you should exercise caution is the amount of seasonal offerings you make. Unless you are a seasoned soap or bath bomb business where you have consistent sales and you have a ready audience that buys everything you put out there you can probably release as many things as you want and sell out of them but if you're just starting out one or two special things is probably the way to go but another thing to consider when it comes to your seasonal stuff is to think of products that could be more season adjacent where it's not just specifically for halloween or not specifically for just fall. These are products that you can continue to sell even after the season is over and it won't seem irrelevant, if you know what I mean. And that can come down to even the naming of your products. For example, if you have a pumpkin bath bomb, maybe you can call it something that's not so spooky. Pumpkin spice has appeal from September, October, November, and even December. Calling it pumpkin spice or something like that where it's not specifically talking about Halloween or anything spooky, will probably allow that product to be relevant for much longer than if you were to call it spooky pumpkin. <laughs> Creative names are escaping me right now. The key is to not to get stuck with seasonal products that you can't move. And that's a problem that I think a lot more soap and bath bomb companies will start to experience in this climate, this economic climate. Keep it to the sense that have mass appeal. And a good barometer for that is checking out the big guys like Bath & Body Works, Lush, seeing what kind of products they're offering and also seeing the type of scent profiles they're offering for their seasonal products. I'm so bad at looking ahead at the next season or two seasons down the line and planning for it and launching products when I should be launching them so that they sell within that time frame. That is one thing that I need to be better at. That's one of my resolutions for next year. We're definitely thinking about our Christmas stuff. I don't know if I'll be doing too many Christmas things. Story time. My first Christmas as a soap business, I decided to sell four different kinds of seasonal soaps. I had a pine soap, a gingerbread soap, I had a peppermint soap, and I think it was a hot chocolate soap. Could be wrong. Anyways, these four soaps, I had eight bars, each of them, and I sold out of the peppermint one pretty quickly. Oh, and the pine one did really well. The ones that were stragglers that took forever to sell were the gingerbread and the hot chocolate one, which informed me that maybe a food scented soap was probably not going to be popular moving forward, so I haven't done one since. So build off of your successes and pay attention to what didn't work and don't do that again for next year. <laughs> and that's another thing too, is I wouldn't make too many seasonal things, especially if you're starting out, because you don't wanna be stuck with seasonal inventory that you can't sell until a full year goes by. So I think for Christmas, it'll just be a few things here and there. But yeah, for next year, if I do one Halloween thing, it'll be one of these. And you probably have seen the cauldrons. They actually look like cauldrons where they're black, but I think this looks pretty cool. This one is Reese's. My, oh, my favorite Halloween chocolate is Reese's Cups like this, Crispy Crunch, and Kit Kats. They are so good. Let me know what your favorite Halloween candy is below. I know you guys don't trick or treat, or at least my audience, majority of you guys are grown women like me. I'm sure like me, you probably have a lot of leftover candy. So let me know what your favorites are. So that is it. I hope you liked this video. This is a more casual sit down, chit chat type of video. Thank you so much to Fizz Fairy for sending me these guys to try out. I highly recommend getting your hands on these guys now while they're on discount so that you can sell them for next year or maybe even this year. There are some soap companies that are spooky themed all year round, like this company, Spooks and Spanx. I really, really love this brand and the company owner. They're based out of Montreal and she just opened a brick and mortar shop. She could sell something like this all year round, I think, and be fine. She's absolutely amazing. If you wanna check out her stuff, 
This is her on TikTok and on Instagram, but the link to these skulls is also down in my description box below. If you want to know the recipe for the stuff that is inside of this cauldron bath bomb, that's also on my Patreon. All of the colors and the fragrance oils and all of the steps that is available on a printable PDF. So go ahead and check that out in the link below. And speaking of my Patreon, thank you to my patrons. You guys are so sweet. Oh my goodness, shout out to one of my patrons who recommended an awesome company that installs water softeners because I desperately need a water softener in my home. But that is the kind of community that I've been building over there and I'm so happy to have everyone in one place that I can talk with, that I can advise, and who on occasion advises me. It is just a magical, wonderful thing. So if you want to check that out, that is linked down below. Thank you to everybody. You guys are so awesome. And that's it. If you like this kind of video, give me a big thumbs up. If you want to see more, then please subscribe. And until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and keep making cool, awesome things like skull, cauldron, bath bombs. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.